new research suggests that in actual fact three quarters of women are feeling pressured to change the way that they look this summer. Now let's have a chat to Honey Ross who's a body confidence activist and co-host of the Body Protest podcast. Uh, Good morning to you Honey. Good morning, hi. Nice to talk to you, honey. Well, let me just start by saying I couldn't be more pleased that there are people like you out there doing these podcasts and getting this message out because I've got teenage daughters and I know that the pressure is all too real. Well, thank you so much. And no, gosh, it's it's hard out there, especially for teenagers. My heart really breaks for them and goes out to them right now. I can't imagine how tough it would be to be growing up with the pressures that they're facing today. Well, you see, don't you, the kind of like images that they come across and everybody is airbrushed, everybody looks perfect. This may not be, as I keep telling them, uh, in real life, this may not be how they actually are, but they've kind of like, you know, brushed it up a little bit. But there does seem to be that pressure to be nigh on perfect. And that is a big ask, isn't it? It's a really big ask and it's coming at a really tough time. I mean, look, I think that... um, The uh, pursuit of perfection has always been something that people have been seeking and that kind of uh, chasing that unrealistic ideal idealized body type you know it's something that is put on us as people in our society there is a lot of pressure to kind of conform to a certain body type but one thing we're seeing I mean especially from uh, Bumble's research is that 59% of us have been left feeling less confident about our appearance post lockdown which is so interesting because it shows that the pressure's never been more high to look a certain way but we are all feeling so anxious about it. And it's like, why are we putting this pressure on ourselves? You know, if there's one thing we should take away from this research that Bumble have done recently is that everybody is feeling the same way and everybody, well, you know, over half of people are feeling this anxiety to put themselves out there. And, you know, it's it's really interesting to see. It, I mean, it has been a really difficult year, 18 months, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, people are living life in a different way and they've had to kind of like readjust. And maybe uh, we've heard of lots of situations where maybe some people have overindulged. Maybe, you know, they've reached for a little bit more alcohol than they normally would, a little bit more food than they normally would, perhaps haven't got as much exercise because they've been in, they've been uh, self-isolating. Uh, and so on top of all of that, the pressures of the world at the minute and the looking great, um, it all stacks up doesn't it it all stacks up well you know and I think it's interesting if you're saying of you know air quotes overindulge we have been in a global pandemic where we were locked in our houses and people were just doing what they needed to do to survive an incredibly difficult time and of course our bodies have changed you know our routines were completely uprooted any kind of you know gyms were closed pools were closed most people you know everything changed and I think it's expected that our bodies would change uh, with that. But the one thing we can do is make sure that we are kinder to ourselves when it comes to the change in our bodies. And, you know, it's appreciating that our bodies have taken us through this incredibly difficult time. And I just, you know, if you are negative about the way, you know, if you talk negatively about your body, you are only making your body a harder place to live. Because, you know, that isn't mm. added. You don't need that internal abuse as well as, you know, Bumble have said a third of people face body shaming, you know, and I think the world is hard enough. Why are we making it harder for ourselves? And you've got a lot of people as well that have been on their own through all of this. And, uh, you know, you've had relationships break down. We know that it's taken its toll on relationships and marriages. People that have been cooped up together have perhaps come through this and thought, oh, I don't know if I want to be with this person. We talked to a lady yesterday. She'd been with her partner for 10 years. And this, she said, was the wake up call. She didn't want to do it anymore. She wanted a fresh yeah. start. She wanted a new her. And she wanted to get out there and start, uh, start dating again. She'd got the confidence to do that. But a lot of people are looking around and looking at themselves and thinking, am I good? enough for this which is so sad it's so sad and I kind of you know I I feel really inclined to say however you show up is enough especially with dating you know you are enough exactly as you are and I think if you show up and someone makes you feel anything less than they are the wrong person and you are not the problem your body is never the problem I think that you know like especially when it comes to body image but it is how we think and feel and relate to our own bodies it's nothing to do with how we look it's a it's nothing to do with what we look like it's to do with how we feel about what we look like and you know we have so much power over that we have more power over that than we think you know if you're able to turn off that noise and 
shut out the voices that might not necessarily be the most helpful, like voices on social media, the voices in the media, things telling us to diet, lose weight, all of these things, you know, you can make your relationship to yourself a really special thing. Um, but like any relationship, it takes work. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And if we go back to, you know, the kids again, as I said, I've got two teenage daughters. Mm. Now, one, uh, you know, she's uh, she's out there with uh, the latest trends, the latest everything. And the younger mm. one is like coming to me and I'm like, do, do you want to do any of this? And she's like, I don't want to be like everybody else because all yeah. her friends, you know, they're getting into the, the, the tanning, the false this, the false that. And that's great. They look lovely. That's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. but she's like, I just want to be me. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to feel pressured into doing it just because everybody else is I just want to be me and I was so proud of her because she's yeah. only 13 but she's realized for herself you don't need to look a certain way to fit in you can just be you completely I mean I always like to say I'm my own beauty standard you know I I am not gonna let other people dictate how I think I should look because I I like how I look and I think it's really empowering to be able to make those decisions about your appearance for yourself and go you know I'm gonna do this and that's fine it may not be what everybody else is doing but that is valid because it is my choice and my body. What impact do you think, uh, you know, social media has on, you know, people from all walks of life that put a picture up and then you'll get somebody that feels that, oh, I'm going to say something detrimental about you because we can all say brush it off. It's just words. But some of that kicks in and it sticks, doesn't it? You can get loads of lovely comments and the odd really bad one. And why is it that the bad ones stick with us? I mean, I think as humans, we weren't ever really meant to receive that kind of feedback. I think like, I mean, there's one thing to receive valid negative criticism, but if it's someone just being derogatory and abusive, obviously it's not going to make you feel good. You know, it's not, it's not in our human nature to be receiving that and being like, oh, brush it off. That was not how we were designed as humans. And I think, I mean, that's one of the reasons I love so much what Bumble are doing on their app, which is they've got a zero tolerance policy for body shaming. Because the fact is, people are held back by those negative comments. People are less likely to want to put themselves out there if they think they're going to be shamed for how they look. So, you know, for, for Bumble to step in and make a space that is safe for you to date, it's really empowering. You know, they've got an automated service that will um, safeguard any kind of derogatory or abusive language that comes through. So you don't even have to see it. And it means that you can just date and have fun with it because it's meant to be fun. Now, we're talking about this today because this is based on this research about women. What, what about men? Do, do they suffer from this as well? Do they feel under pressure to look a certain way, do you think? Men were included in the study by Bumble. And I, of course, men are under different pressures to women, but pressures nonetheless. And I think it's really important to think about male body image. And it's something that's so often brushed under the rug. But it's a really prevalent topic. And I think, I mean, there are specific, uh, there's specific, yeah what is it three quarters of men and women say that their insecurities have held them back when it comes to finding love uh with a quarter of those people even cancelling dates it's affecting both men and women and I think it's really important to note that and I'm glad you brought it up well listen I think people should love themselves more and it has been lovely talking to you honey uh tell us about the podcast then because I think it will be a value for people to go find it and uh, have a look so where can they find it Thank you so much. Um, you can find the Body Protest podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And it is, you know, I work with Dr. Nadia Craddock and we wanted to combine storytelling with science to try and help people better understand their relationship with their bodies, because everybody is on such a unique, complicated journey that is shaped by so many factors. And I think it's bringing in those statistics and grounding them in real life stories that makes it so effective and helps you understand Um that you can change your relationship with yourself because I think it feels so impenetrable to some people. Well, let's, let's hope that anybody that was kind of like sitting there worrying, uh, you know, gets uh, gets something from this. And again, thank you, Honey Ross, uh, for your time today. Go and check out that uh, Body Protest podcast as well. Anybody uh, that has a need to. It's uh, BBC Radio WM. Give us a call. Let's play you some uh, ZZ. 